What's going on guys? This is Kai Shiro. Welcome back. So we are back with another video. On this video, we're going to cover OCG Metagame Report and Decklist Reviews for the past week. We do have July 9 to July 14, so short span of days. But we're going to see which decks have top in Southeast Asian region from Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. So we're going to see which decks have top uh, pre Duelist Cup, rather WCQ Asia Finals, and also the Japanese Championship Tournament. So without further ado, let's start. So moving on first, we do have Duelist Stepian Samarinda in Indonesia. The champion will be Dogmatica Voices Voice. So it's been very debatable whether Voices Voice would play the Nadir because that deck will regrettably losing, losing to Drone Lockbird is very uh, tough challenge on this Nadir Servant. Once you play Nadir, you are much more prone to Droll and you wouldn't want that as a Voices Voice player. I have played this deck and losing bad to Droll is a major issue of the deck. So tapping with Voices Voice and Dogmatica is quite a tall task here. So congrats to him, to Dharma. Next we do have Weather Painter. Wow, a very spicy entry here in our early report. So the second place would be Yusuf Raman with Weather Painter. So Weather Painter, another shifter deck can be very utilized towards the metagame right now which is very centric towards the graveyard the luri the engraver all of those will go into the graveyard so shifter it all makes sense on this deck and macrocosmos as well a very notable floodgate to stop the opponents from playing the game so yeah very uh, huge uh, fit here from yusuf with his weather painter and next Moving on, we do have another deck that counters the graveyard, this time with Exosister playing the new rank up. I forgot the name of this uh, card from DB29. It is used to reveal an XYZ monster on the extra deck. Uh, probably a numbered XYZ, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So you are going to reveal and search for cards and you are going to have access towards the Marta. And Marta is one card combo of Exosister. It's been one of the best one card combos in the game right now and Exo is a deck that will scrutinize the Finsmith decks all over and the return niya is also massive because the banishing effects of Exosister is perennial into this meta game to uh, uh, step aside the floating effects of most decks that could have floating effects on their graveyard. And next we do have Numeron, wow! Another unconventional deck, uh, the old Tenpai, no? We could say that because Numeron is a deck that is overshadowed by Tenpai Dragon and even Cyber Dragon. So, Numeron, no? It's very nice to see Numer Numeron still tapping. But yeah, it plays the standard Numeron. Uh, only Maxi and Ash are the hand traps and played a lot of uh, Kaijus into the main deck and also Lava Golem. Next, we do have Tachyon Horus Bestial. So, this deck have uh, lost the Catapult Turtle, but it didn't matter that much. Uh, I have often seen a lot of uh, decklist of Tachyon playing without the Catapult Turtle, so it's not a major issue for them. They're still very competent and still a uh, very nice deck to play. And next, we do have 6th place, Andre. We do have Meta Beat Stun. So this time with Nadir and Ecclesia. So those can be very pivotal towards the success of this Meta Beat to have additional draws and plus card advantages from the Nadir Servant, dumping the Garura. You get to draw one and you will search for the Ecclesia and you can get the Punishment. So you have plus 3 in a single card. And next, the 7th place would be Fluandris. So the good old Fluandris. So this tournament was very uh, centered around dealing against the meta. No? Uh, most of the decks here are anti-meta or anti-graveyard decks. So Fluandris, another shifter deck. It will never go out of style because it's Fluandris. The birds will migrate every time the format. Uh, enables them to do so and the last place will be the 8th place Rendi, the Ritual Beast so Ritual Beast playing evenly match and Dark Ruler no more so those cards are very good against the Ubel uh, mainly Dark Ruler no more would stop the board of the Ubel and also evenly match very strong against the Rescue Ace so yeah, moving on we do have uh, any member weekly tournament from July 7 we do have 1st place Snake Ice Fire King so yeah Standard build. Uh, it didn't play bonfire. Yeah, it didn't play bonfire. Wow. So it just only played one for one, no. So yeah, no bonfire. No regards against bonfire. But yeah, played two only poplar and is quite uh, lucrative because you would want to play three poplar 
on this if you are not playing bonfire but yeah very interesting deck build here and next we do have second place voices voice oh i think this is a very standard voices voice it just played the cross out and called by no into the main deck because you want to get rid of Droll and Lockbird and even Ash Blossom hurts a lot on this deck on Safira. It will be very detrimental to stop the Safira. So Cold By and Cross Out are very nice here. Next would be third place Chimera 60 card version with Grass. Yeah, and Finsmith and Illusionist package, all of those stuff. And even Horus Wow. So this is crazy. Really crazy stuff here from Chimera 60 from Fiki. And next, moving on. We do have U U King Mal Malaysia, the uh, shared tournament in Malaysia. First place would be Pure and Raw Thunder Dragon. So it's very nice to see Thunder Dragon getting the respect that they have been deserved for a very long time now. Once they have gotten the third copy of Colossus, it's pretty much ball game once again for the Thunder Dragon. Uh, the Thunder Dragon Colossus is phenomenal to stop the meta decks. In the format right now, Colossus uh, stops the player from adding their cards. So it's very good against the Snake Eyes decks and New Bell, of course, and even Voices Voice and Runic. They would struggle a lot against Colossus, and it's a very good, huge bit stick monster and a very strong monster to uh, dominate the game. So, yeah, on this first place, it is just pure with solemn cards like Strike and Judgment to control the match and protect the Colossus from effects. And next, we do have Labyrinth, Finsmith. So, Finsmith with uh, double rollback. So, it's very uh, uneasy to see double rollback into this uh, because most of the time than not, you would see only one rollback into this uh, Labyrinth. That's been that uh, current trend into Labyrinth decklist. But on this, uh, I played the Labyrinth setup and one rollback. Very interesting uh, tech options and deck building uh, prowess on this uh, build. Next, we do have Tachyon, Bestial Horus. So, another Tachyon deck, no? So, Tachyon still a very competent deck and can still top. And mainly to the fact that you have a lot of uh, rank 8 plays to do on this deck. Very easy to break boards with the Dingirisu. And also the Dragubion, which can enable to OTK faster with the Numeran Dragon. So, it's really easy to navigate this deck. And the only problem would be Bestials, but he is playing Bestials into this deck. Probably to make the deck more resilient and uh, very uh, good options to counter the Ubel from this Druid Swarm and Magnamut. Next would be Tier Laments. Another copium list for Tier Laments, but it works, no? With the Finsmith and Horus, you get to dump cards using the Beatrice and Zombie Vampire. And the Tier Laments are just Tier Laments. They are the best deck in the history for a reason. So they will keep on adapting and... The new, newer engines will get to improve the tier elements and make it playable and competent. And yeah, moving on, we do have Butuan, New Gyo community. So shoutouts to our friend in Butuan. So the first place would be Visa Swinsmith Horus. So this deck have been a thing on the previous two weeks of Japanese metagame. I have ranked the Visa Swinsmith as a tier 4 on the tier D uh, status, but... Yeah, this deck have lost its traction and there's not many people are uh, investing time onto this deck. But it's still competent, uh, very easy to link climb. Going into Apulusa is very easy. The Astraload and the Horus engine are good tools to help you link climb faster. Going into Apulusa and also the Caesar is also a good way to prevent the Nibiru from nuking your board. So yeah, very nice uh, deck list here from Kilios. And next, we do have Zivest, uh, Mech Knights, wow, another interesting deck. So, Mech Knight, a uh, very long forgotten deck by most people, but it is still capable, no? Looking on our list, uh, it played a bunch of fan traps and board breakers. In the side deck, it is mostly a compromise of fan traps. And in the main deck, it played Dark Ruler No More, which lets you enable to break the boards of Ubel. Very, very strong board from Ubel are very required of playing such cards like the Cruel No More to stop them from overwhelming you. So we have very nice uh, deck build here from Zivest, second place of the tournament. Next, moving on, we do have Gaia Card card Game Sanctuary. So we do have Chi Sai Fong. So this is the, yeah, probably, if I'm not mistaken, he is one of the Asia uh, finalists in WCQ Asia Finals. 
So he is playing Ubel with Finn Smith, of course. So yeah, a very good player on their country and one of their stellar players out there. And he w won on his featured match, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, I think his list looks very solid. And probably this is the tournament that he have gotten practice and training towards the WCQ. And next we do have Tekian King uh, with Tenpai Dragon. So main deck copies of Regeki and Talent. Very interesting. Uh, those cards are not really generic for Tenpai Dragon. But you you would see a lot of uh, innovations of players playing Regeki. Because if Uvel doesn't end on Omni Negate, if they don't have respect on board breakers, they would fumble really hard against the Regeki and Talent as well. Very versatile card. You get to draw cards from your opponent, especially on the mirror match. Which Tenpai Dragon has a lot of hand traps to interrupt the opponent. So talent is very much available and live. And also talent could rip hand cards from your opponent to uh, exclude the threats on their hand cards. And next would be Je Jeffrey Nang. Yeah. With Snake Eyes Finn Smith. Of course, very standard. Uh, just play double Nibiru and double draw into the main deck. 42 card. Quite extensive, no? For uh, Snake Eyes Finn Smith. But yeah, it works. It definitely works. Because you have a lot of one card and it's mostly one card combos on this deck. So you have a free will to play a bunch of hand traps into this Snake Eyes, Finn Smith. And the last would be Jason Lim with Tenpai Dragon. Another Tenpai Dragon this time with Super Poly into the main deck. I am surprised that he didn't play the new Demise Fusion card on this uh, extra deck. Because that would be very substantial to break the boards of Ubel. And you get to have an additional normal summon on top of that. So yeah, moving on, we do have uh, Duvils Devata in Indonesia. First place would be Tenpai Dragon. Uh, he is cosplaying Goku with the erratic uh, level 8. So <laughs> very insane and funny from Bayou Petir. So Tenpai, Tenpai Dragon, I also play one Mourner into this Tenpai Dragon build because I would rather see Mourner over the likes of Imperm or yeah, other hand traps that you couldn't play. When you get to draw it with Maxi. So Mourner is a huge card here. If you get to draw it with Maxi and stop the opponent from uh, their effects. So yeah, you get so much value from this one of Mourner into the main deck. Into this Tenpai Dragon and play Dark Hole, no? So Dark Hole, another alternative for Regeki. So he is playing two Regeki but he opted to play third copy of Dark Hole. Another interesting choice. And next we do have Chimera. Yeah, Chimera with Illusionist and Melodius. So this has been very tcg SK way of deck building the Chimera. Most people in TCG have been playing around the Chimera with the Melodious Engine. Maybe you want to have extra fusions on this, de on this deck and also the Ostinato is a one card combo as well. So yeah, fair to him. And next we do have Salaman Great from Reno. So Salaman Great, very standard build. Uh, very surprised to see Artifact Lancea into this deck. Most people are neglecting the threats of Rescue Ace and Artifact Lancea is a card that is an absolute monster against Rescue Ace. You get to stop the Turbulence Banish and you would left, uh, left the Rescue Ace with no place. They would just end on Little Knight or something Apulusa from their Finsmith. But you really threaten them with the Lancea, uh, preventing their Turbulence from playing. And next we do have Infernoid 40 card. Oh, 44 card. Uh, very different from the 60 card Infernoid and it only played one bonfire. Maybe he just wants to uh, use the bonfire to get the poplar. And probably this is one of the best ways to play Infernoid into 40 card version using the Snake Eyes because you have a lot of one card combos and you also benefit from the Promethean access because you do have a lot of fire monsters into this deck. And yeah, moving on we do have Duel Bacolod tournament. Shoutouts to our friends in Bacolod. First would be Devil Link from Jan Alfred Go. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So, Finsmith Unchained. So, in other terms, Devil Link. So, very standard. Played Triple Droll uh, into the main deck and neglected the copies of Valor because Droll is much more impactful against the Finsmith decks. And next would be Tierlements. Ah, uh, Finsmith, of course. Tierlements. Another Tierlements deck. This time with Visas. Uh, aside from the Horus Engine. So, Visas, another tool to make the Tierlements work. And yeah. Pretty much linear. Uh, you get to have access towards the field spell of Tierlaments and Scareclaw. So very inevitably good here. 
And next, we do have Purely. So, Purely, another deck that is bound to outlast the Wits of Time because it is very linear. You get to play a lot of hand traps. You have a lot of utility cards into the deck like Droplet and also Talent and even the likes of the Black Goat Laps are very efficient here in Purely. So, Purely will still continue to perform even though they have lost major uh, losses already from the previous ban list. And next would be Evil Link, uh, this time with Evil Twin or Live Twin using the Unchained and also the uh, Finsmith. So this is more of like the standard Devil Link. And yeah, play Droll as well on the main deck to stop the Finsmith because they have a lot of Finsmith on their metagame. And yeah, moving on, we do have Bandung Duvilis Banlis from Indonesia. First place would be Voices Voice with Triple DD Crow into the side deck. DD Crow is another way to stop the Luri and the Engraver and the legs of the Snake Eyes cards into the graveyard. So you have a lot of uh, freedom to banish other targets except for Light and Dark from the usual Bestial package. So DD Crow is much more flexible and versatile in terms of that department. And also play Double Dark Ruler No More. I'm not really sure about that because Voices Voice doesn't have too much threats to break the boards. So you would have a hard time on finishing the game off if you will uh, capitalize on this Dark Ruler no more. Next, we do have Dent by Dragon, this time with Double Mourner into the main deck. So Mourner, another copy of Imperm or Pseudo Veiler, no? And it didn't even play copies of Veiler. Yeah, it played only one. So focus more on other hand traps like Diddy Crow and Mourner. And also board breakers like Droplet and Super Poly. And uh, finally, it plays the new Duke of Demise. The new fusion target for Yubel and you get to fusion 2 fiend or 2 zombie monsters and you will have an additional normal summon from this card so it's very good for Tenpai Dragon to bait out the opponent. You have access towards the normal summon of Dora Draco and also the Bi uh, Pydra. So yeah, very good card here for Tenpai Dragon. Next from Wens, uh, Unchained Fiend Smith, so another fiend link and this time it played the pointer of Red Lotus and the uh, Blue Angel Tears package on the side deck which lets you have a uh, more polished and more powerful going first uh, capacity into this deck and next we do have fourth place Alel Snake Eyes Finsmith so yeah it played Rise to Full Height another card to sta stop the Tenpai Dragon from OTK and also played the Chorizo and Barone package uh, made popular by Taiwanese and Chinese players and the previous China mainland uh, WCQ tournaments and also Wang Chaching we have seen how he adapted that strategy onto his uh, Snake Eyes Finsmith and it definitely paid off because he got a uh, finalist on the WCQ Asia Finals and Baron is Barone, it's another form of Omni Negate and there's a reason why Baron is banned in that TCG a very generic and powerful uh, card into the modern game and yeah Moving on, we do have Yugi Community Sambales uh, Yugi Gapo comeback tournament so shoutouts to our friends uh, in Gapo First would be our friend in Kaido Willis Companion, we have Joshua Oriano with the uh, Chimera Finsmith. So quite standard build of Chimera Finsmith, he didn't opt to reveal his uh, side deck. But yeah, played the standard amount of Chimera cards and also Finsmith cards. And next would be Voiceless Voice from Benson Echaure. And this time it played the uh, Pendulum Grab into the main deck with only one Sauravis. This can be very dangerous once you have drawn the copy of the Sauravis and also you don't have access towards the second copy of Sauravis, it will hurt your grind game. But the flip side is you have better a uh, matchup against the Tenpai Dragon using the Pendulum Grab, summoning out the Ad Ice Mature Burst so you have protection towards their battle phase shenanigans. And also played a bunch of going second cards on the side deck, played Droplet and Dark Ruler No More with Lightning Storm. And yeah, moving on we do have Capis Yu-Gi-Oh! Association uh, regular tournament. So shout outs to our friends in Visayas in Capis. First place would be Fluandris with a bunch of random extra deck cards. So he opted for a more going first oriented type of gameplay on this uh, deck with uh, Owens Fluandris, uh, played Macrocosmos and Rivalry into the main deck and even the counter trap of Fluandris. Yeah, very unfamiliar card for the Fluandris and played a bunch of interesting cards on this uh, side deck. Magic Cylinder, I haven't thought that I would see Magic Cylinder played into 2024 and Swords of Revealing Light, good way to stall out the game and also the Vanity Duo, the Ruler and yeah, the, the Fiend, so 
you get to have extra normal summon in this deck and stun the opponent from the ruler and fiend. And next would be Crystal Beast. So this is more of like a conclave control, yeah. But yeah, I didn't play no Necro Valley, so it's more of a comboish a uh, type of Crystal Beast. Yeah, it is not a conclave control. But yeah, on the side deck it played Sanctum and Sight. Those can be very paramount to stop the decks from breaking your board and playing the game. And next, we do have Buster Blader Horus. So this has been popularized by TCG players. And many people in the OCG have adapted it. I am yet to, te to, to test the Buster Blader Horus. But I strongly believe that this deck is still capable. And it is quite consistent considering that you are going to dump targets from the Horus. And Trap Trick as well will help your consistency of this Buster Lock. So yeah, very nice deck here from uh, Josh. Next would be Omni Hero, so another deck that is kinda popular in some locals in Japan and Korea. And people are resorting towards the heroes because of the Dark Law, of course. Dark Law is Dark Law, you get to stop the graveyard shenanigans and interactions of the game. So this is a very good deck when you go first. And yeah, it is almost guaranteed OTK once you stop the opponent from playing in their uh, turn 2. And it is very easy to OTK with this deck. And next, we do have Dark Magician. Wow! Dark Magician from Paolo. So Dark Magician, he didn't opt to reveal his side deck and only played 12 extra deck cards, no? And a bunch of one-offs, one Kuribo, one Time Wizard. And this is crazy. Yeah, very crazy. You are going to feel like you are Yugi when you are playing this kind of deck. And yeah, Dark Magician, very insane. And let's hope for the best for Dark Magician whether they would get the same amount of love from the card game creators for supporting the blue eyes with their new structure deck. I hope Dark Magician will also get that same treatment moving forward. And yeah. Oh, they still have uh, results. Oh. So moving on, we do have Order of the Duelist and Albay. Shoutouts to our Albay friends. First would be Mark Stephen, our friend from Kaido Willis with Jubelfin Smith. So, very standard. He didn't opt to show his side deck. Standard deck building standard deck building here from Mark Stephen. And next would be Stephen, uh, Tenpai Dragon. So, yeah, I didn't play Droplet and Lightning Storm. I often see that I would rather risk my chances of drawing cards for hand traps to stop the opponent. And, yeah, stop them from establishing their board rather than breaking myself. Because Forbidden, forbidden Droplet is too costly for me in my own experience using Tent by Dragon and other cards like Lightning Storm and evenly much rather uh, Regeki would uh, instantly get negated from only negate threats so yeah it's really debatable if you would play board breakers into the main deck of Tent by Dragon right now and next would be second place uh, Patrick uh, Voices Voice so yeah played a very standard list uh, played a bunch of floodgates and powerful going first card like Judgment and anti-spell so those cards are very strong to help your board uh, process the meta decks because you would want to stop the dark ruler no more the droplet of the meta decks and even evilly match so droplet and uh, evilly match are out of the picture if you have the uh, solemn judgment and next would be third place supreme king pendulum magician so pen best deck let's go with triple dragon shine no it's been the debate of pen magi decks uh, whether they would play triple dragon shine or two but he opted to play three and yeah moving on we do have dueling nexus a tournament in malaysia if i'm not mistaken so first place would be sk uh played the uh, crazy crazy algebraic uh geometric any kinds of math is included on this uh trap card the equation something i forgot the name it's really crazy for someone who didn't like math on their childhood days growing up it's very hard to to <laughs> i'm i can stop laughing it's very hard to calculate and uh, play through with this card especially if your opponent doesn't even know how to do the calculations and they would just okay or let it pass it's really crazy yeah very crazy card here and next would be our way uh 10 by dragon with centurion yeah centurion into this deck so I played the Emblema Oath and also the Field Spell of Stand Up and played uh, Set Rotation. 
So yeah, this is more of like a Tenpai Dragon that wants to go first and OTK the opponent once you stop them from playing the game. So yeah, very interesting here. And next would be Nichols, uh, Tenpai Dragon, another Tenpai Dragon. Uh, played a very interesting tech card, the Dark End Dragon something, I forgot the name. So it's another card to support the Dragon archetypes and also played Trust and Talent into the main deck. And yeah, moving on, the last uh, deck. In our report would be Aaron with Yubel Finsmith. So yeah, Yubel Finsmith, I cannot clearly see the cards here. But yeah, I believe it's Yubel Finsmith. Oh, Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes Finsmith. Yeah, Snake Eyes Finsmith. So Snake Eyes Finsmith with double draw and double Wailer into the main deck. Very standard, played the Silvera into this uh, main deck. And yeah. That sums up our OCG metagame report and decklist reviews. If you have time, you could visit our page of Uncrowned Kings local metagame report in Facebook to drop a follow or like. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you do learn something from it. If you found this video informative and helpful, please consider subscribing into my YouTube channel. It definitely motivates me a lot to keep going and upload this kind of contents. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.